Happy Friday, y'all. People always ask me, hey Mike, what's the easiest way to scale a real estate business? And um, the answer is pretty easy. It's um, it's one of those things where if you can get it dialed in, and there are a few agents in our local marketplace here and in our national network that really have this dialed in. And man, I can tell you, if you can get this right, it will make things so much easier for you. And the way to, the easiest way to scale a real estate business is this. It's through developing and nurturing relationships. And, you know, there's so many different things you can do to get business, quote unquote, get business in real estate, right? And everybody wants to sell you something. But the best thing you can ever do, and by the way, this is typically the most cost effective thing to do is develop and nurture relationships and the way you do that is obviously you have a sphere of influence right you have a, a, a database of people that you already know and um, some of those are you know just acquaintances throughout the years and some of those are past clients but they all have one thing in common and that is that they already know, like, and trust you. And so you've already built rapport with these people. And so oftentimes when you, when one of those people, if you've done your job appropriately, in other words, if you've gotten mind share, if you've marketed to these people appropriately, then um, you're not even competing for their business. In other words, they don't even think of anybody else. They wouldn't give their business to anybody else because you've done such a good job for these folks in the past. And so, um, while that is the easiest way to scale a real estate business, because um, trust me, when you're competing on a listing with you know one, two, three other agents, um, some of them you're going to win and some of them you're going to lose. Um, but typically, on a on a sphere of influence, uh, past client uh, appointment, you're almost always going to win because typically it's a not a competitive situation. So here's the caveat to generating, or let's say developing a business based on doing business with your sphere of influence. Here's the caveat to that, right? Is it's a long game. It, it is not something that happens overnight. And I know a lot of you out there um, understand this very well. In fact, I met with a gentleman on Wednesday down in Mason um, who is doing this very well. It's just not happening as quickly as he'd like. And so what you want to do is while you're generating, while you're nurturing, while you're developing those relationships is you have to have other sources uh, for business. And a good source for business is to start generating internet leads, right? Buyers and sellers uh, and sort of backfill your business with those um, so you can generate some revenue to then continue to invest not only in the lead generation that you're doing for buyers and sellers online, but also for your sphere of influence. And that's when you really start to see a business grow is when you have different pillars for lead generation. So uh, those of you out there grinding with your personal network, uh, you, maybe you're not seeing the results or you're seeing results, but it's just not really enough to um, create a, some sustainability or predictability for your income in real estate. Uh, make sure and try to add in some online lead generation. And if you already have it, that's great. Um, if you don't, I'd be happy to talk to you about what we're using right now. Uh, we use a platform and we're generating anywhere from seven to 800 unique buyer and seller lead registrations every single month. And so I'd love to help you get plugged in on that. But uh, other than that, have a wonderful weekend and I hope this meets you and helps you where you're at.